on the fourth of the second two eighteen, hey? fourth day of the second month two eighteen. Um, Paradise Now Church Sunday meet. Now Channel Nine Television are presently promoting and presenting and glorifying a, some deadbeat criminal by the name of Chopper Reed. And, you know, then they wonder. They wonder why society has become a killing field for heartless criminals and, and heartless rebels bashing people and one punch... Uh, hospital job, you know, uh, coward punches and they're glorifying uh, criminals, right? Glorifying, you're going to glorify criminals, you're going to have young people wanting to be like the criminals, you know, and they're going to think it's uh, acceptable to rob the rich and give to the poor as Robin Hood. Who was a hood. And so, uh, brother, would you like to just get that door there? And so, uh, we got to be careful what we promote, don't we? We have to be careful. What our children see us promoting, what... That's all right there, brother. Yeah. We have to be careful what we promote in front of the young ones. As we get older, we always have someone younger under us. When we're 10 year old, we have 8 year olds and 7 year olds under us. When we're 15, we have other ones under us. When we're 20, we have younger ones under us. When we're 60, we have younger ones under us. And we have to be setting that example, the true, infallible, acceptable, good and perfect example, the Christ. How does he do this? What does he think of this? Not good. Chop a reed. Brutal crim. Certainly not of the Lord Jesus. A white uh, Brit, a white Englishman, I don't know whether he was just English or Welsh. He drove a van into people outside a mosque and ended one, one of their lives and um, then come on in, yes, and then uh, yeah, it's uh, yeah, the devil has started his antics, his act, antics already, hasn't he? I tell you, I, I've never been able to preach the word once in 30 years where the devil hasn't pulled something on when I've been trying to convey the truth. Never once, whether it's on the street, in a pulpit, something has gone down that's just totally sidetracked everyone's mind on what's being said. But praise God we haven't got to the uh, infallible word yet. But we know, don't we, we have an enemy. We know we have an enemy. We know that we don't fight against flesh and blood. We fight against the devil and his children. Hey? The devil moves through his children. Just like God moves through his children. The devil's children are rebels. Just like Chopper Reed. God's children are obedient, submissive, holy, gentle. And uh, they delight in the truth. Not in sin. So, uh, a white Brit whether he's a Welshman or not, I don't know, drove a van into all these Muslims outside a mosque and apparently killed one at least because he had it up to the eyeballs with Muslims. Anyway, they gave him life in prison without question. My question is, do the Muslim terrorists receive these sort of penalties or do they get the wrist slap? Do the Muslim terrorists receive this? they laymen and killing soldiers, British soldiers in the street, blah, blah. Yeah, double standard somewhere. Uh, Bobby Shuler of uh, 
I call it the hour of flowers, but it's, it's supposed to be the hour of power. The hour of flowers. Bobby Shuler, he said this morning, God wants to hear your prayers. You know, like some people go to the pastor to pray, you know. They say, oh, can you pray for me? But God wants to hear your prayers. He wants to hear, you know, everyone's prayer, not just the pastor's prayer. And he also said, he said, I'm quoting Robbie Shuler now. God wants to hear your prayer as much as he wants to hear the pastor's prayer, wait for it, and the Pope's prayer. I tell you what, you know, we, we, it's all it all comes out in the wash, doesn't it? And while we're on that subject of the Pope, many years ago, I reckon, or probably about... 18, is that many years ago? At least. James Robertson and his wife Betty uh, digging w holes in the ground, you know, wells for the uh, Africans. Everyone thought, wow, these are great people. <clears throat> but I used to say, well, outside of digging the, digging the wells, the guy's a dog, you know. And they said, oh, I know, he's a lovely bloke. He's this and he's that. I said, no, he's a dog. And they said, listen, you can't go talking like that. You just can't go speaking like that about men of God. I said, no, 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 no. And uh, here it is, this picture. Uh, accidentally stumbled across uh, James Robertson sitting uh, in a room with the Pope, with Francis, the talking mule. They're on the plonk together. The vino's on the table. And he's high-fiving the, high the Pope, Pope Francis. What do you reckon about that? Eh? High fiving the the whore church leader and the plonks on the table and the cheese and the wafers and the crackers. Well, what I said come to pass again, didn't it? You know, there's the proofs in the pudding, and uh, you can't say any more than that. Digging the wells, hey, eh? Rick Warren. Rick Warren, Billy Graham, the Osteens, Copelands, they all suck up to the Popes of what era they're in. And tells me something. Tells me something. It tells me that they're not the true followers of Christ. Come out from among them and be separated, says the Lord. Last Sunday, 28th of the 1st, um, 18, there was a gay march or, or a homo march down in St. Kilda, St. Kilda, uh, Pride March, I think. Jesus, I, I, I think we start a Jesus Pride March. What do you reckon? Nah. Anyway, they announced that they're, um, they're going to build a, a, a sodomite centre, I mean a Pride centre in Sydney, a Pride centre to celebrate and and in memory of the the day that homosexuality was accepted in Australia. Homosexual marriages, well, I tell you what, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when the judgment's going to come. And the pale horse will come. He will come. And death rides the pale horn. Yeah, eighty-year-old priest. Everyone said he was a nice man. Nice man, very helpful. He was bowled over as he was walking down the road on the footpath. An eighteen-year-old. Uh, I don't know if the the young man was off his face on ice or what, but dangerous driving they got him for. But now the usual talk is, oh, well, he's in heaven now. But he died a Roman Catholic priest. In other words, he died a man who totally ignored and, 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 and denounced the cross, the work of the cross, and the outworking of the cross. But he's in heaven. That's what a human priesthood does. 
It denies the cross, brother. It denies the cross. It denies the the work of the cross, what Jesus done. It denies Jesus and denies the outworking, what we gain from Jesus' death, burial and resurrection, which is the power of the Holy Spirit, salvation. And, uh, yeah, gifts of the Spirit. The anointing. It all came because of the uh, work of the cross. Without the cross and without the work uh, and the outworking of it, there'd be no Holy Spirit power. We'd never be able to do what Jesus said because we wouldn't have the power to do it. Right? So, yeah. I was in the shopping centre the other day and a guy was selling tickets for the deaf. I think it was the deaf. I don't know whether he was deaf. but And I said to him, no, I, I don't gamble. Which is a good starter, you know, to get the word of God in. I don't gamble. Gambling starts at school. The teachers teach the children how to gamble and, and, and you know, they do their raffles and then it goes on further and further. I don't gamble. It, it's not trusting the Lord. It, 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 it's uh, just high hopes that fail many and brings forth anxiety, maxed out anxiety. I said, look, can I ask you a question? I said, do you believe you're a sinner? And he said, well, like most reply, Everyone's a sinner. I said, no, hang on. Okay, let me start again. There's me and you, I'm talking to you. Yeah? Do you believe you're a sinner? Well, sometimes. Um, I said, no. <laughs> Maybe I, you might be deaf. Who was collecting money for the deaf? And I said, let me ask you again, are you a sinner? Do you believe you're a sinner? It depends what you call sin. I said, look, I've got to go. But look, take this brochure and have a great day. And he took the brochure. <laughs> Such a simple question, but they'll walk over hot coals to avoid it, won't they? Yes. Yeah. Um, Pillar Baptist Church, the so-called leader there, Mr. Robertson, uh, is tied up with this um, uh, Stephen Anderson in Phoenix. And this Anderson fellow, like uh, Robertson and the Pillar Church, in most churches and many churches, hell-bent on... Uh, winning souls and saving souls but the gospel is not really about saving souls the gospel is about putting Jesus as number one that's the priority then number two you love your neighbor by giving them the message of Jesus and everyone said Amen. yeah thank you and he said well this Anderson guy was on a video and he said, we got more people saved. We can get more people saved than Jesus. And Robertson says the same thing because he's just parroting Anderson. That's an impossibility. No one can get more people saved because he was using the scripture, greater things than these will you do. And then, then they said, out of their carnal, solid thinking, oh, we can get more people saved than Jesus. That's an impossibility. That's how much they know who the truth... They think they're the saviour. Jesus is the saviour. <laughs> you can't get anyone saved without Jesus. <laughs> He's the one saving. And everyone said amen again. I'm sure they did. I know you did. I can hear that. Amen. Yeah, so... Uh, on the internet... Um, Boy, oh boy. 
getting back to that Stephen Anderson, which I, I think he's just a media whore. Stephen Anderson, just a media whore. Um, like that Danny Nullia, just likes to be in the in the limelight. In March of 2016, he anointed and appointed this bloke called Tyler Baker. And he said in front of everyone on this video, you're going to be a great man of God, you're going to do great exploits. Well, it wasn't long after, uh, and he said, this, this guy meets all requirements of our uh, church and fellowship. Um, and then, as he was anointing him, I couldn't understand why he would say that. When he put his hand on, he said, fill him with the Spirit. Wouldn't he already be filled with the Spirit? But does Anderson, uh, uh, charlatan, says, I'll oh, fill him with your spirit so he can do the work of God. I thought, you, you're born of the spirit and filled with the spirit when you're born again. Hello. Because you're born of the spirit. You're born of the word. And you're born of the spirit. John 3, 5. Born of water and the Spirit. How can you be born of the Spirit and not be filled with the Spirit? It's only part of the Spirit come in, does he? Maybe just puts a foot in or a leg or something or an arm. Oh, it, it's absurd. The, what they call ministers today. It's ridiculous. Not long after um, that this guy was the deacon, this fellow Baker, not long after, the next week Baker plants a church in Florida and not long down the road, uh, Anderson fires him and, and gets rid of him because he says he doesn't believe in the Trinity. And then he says, oh, I don't think he's saved. I don't think Baker is saved. But this is the guy he had laid hands on and anointed and appointed as a, a church planter and a uh, firebrand for his, his business or whatever it is. And this guy Anderson has this doctrine that you just believe in your head and you know you're saved, but then he contradicts himself and says you really can't know if someone else is saved because they, just because they claim that they're saved. Well, what about this Baker fella? It's just a bunch of confusion that this uh, pillar church in goodness are tied up with and this teaching, this, this new teaching sweeping through cities that... You don't have to repent and you don't have to obey the Lord Jesus to be saved. But uh, let me say that this Stephen Anderson, <laughs> he counts the offerings and he, he counts, gets a tally on souls saved. He says a soul saved when they... Just believe. When, when you tell someone about Jesus and they say, yeah, I believe, well, that's another soul sign. That's all you got to do is believe. Because they said so. Just like Baker, who was fired and booted out of the church. And, uh, and you can do anything, this Anderson said. It doesn't matter what you do, after you supposedly being born again, you can do anything and still go to heaven. Can you be a Sodomite? Because that's what Anderson and uh, Logan Robertson of Pillar Baptist Church rail against. They rail against homosexuals. They say that homosexuals need to be shot, all of them, because they can never be saved. Homosexuals can never be saved. 
God will never forgive them. And they say they have the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said he desires that not one perish. And we know in Corinthians, Paul speaking to the Corinthians, and such were some of you. <laughs> such were some of you. But you've been cleansed. You've been sanctified. You've been brought into the house of God. Jesus died for sinners, not, not the righteous. Yeah. The aim of this this movement, I reckon it is, it's a it's a wicked movement of lies and deceit. Their aim is to be a Baptist pastor. And they rag every other Baptist, I mean, but yet they still keep the name Baptist. Why would you keep the name Baptist? When it's supposedly typifying John the Baptizer supposedly and John the baptizer said repent but yet they don't say they say you don't have to repent yes Anderson and Robinson Robertson they pray that the, the homosexuals die and go to hell I, I don't I pray they repent and turn from their wicked way and be saved just like all of us here repented and turned from our wicked ways. Amen? Amen? Yes. And now we've got to go on to be saved to the uttermost. One uh, comment on the internet said about this Mr. Robertson. Um, that... Uh, I think it was his brother-in-law speaking. I knew Logan once. His wife's sister was once my wife. He was just your usual Kiwi guy that I didn't know to be really a Christian until he married a Christian. He met her while she was away from home study at university. He was into hunting and fishing and cars, a bit of a boy racer, doing up cars with his mates. The usual guy with no problems. I ended up getting divorced. This is the brother-in-law, I think. I ended up getting divorced and then lost the friendship with Logan and the extended family or the outlaws, that would be, wouldn't it? The outlaws and the in-law thing. Recently, I heard through the grapevine that he was on the news. They were reporting a dad who had abducted his kids and took off. The police found him in, and the kids in Napier in New Zealand. Logan stayed in Napier in the mental health unit for two weeks and was then transferred for a month to Hamilton with severe depression. Then they li le lived with his parents for a while. We have, we have to keep in mind that 18 months ago, this is a 2014 comment uh, uh, on the cyberline, we, we have to keep in mind that 18 months ago when Logan abducted his kids, he was diagnosed with religious delusions of grandeur, which is a type of schizophrenia. He must not be taking his medication and the media has no idea. The Logan I knew wouldn't be crazy like he is now. He wouldn't even have wanted to be a pastor or speak in front of people. Just thought I would put this out there. He's mentally ill. So we should be praying for Logan and praying for Stephen Anderson that they be saved from the sin, self, Satan, the wrath to come and hellfire. And everyone agreed and said, amen, amen. amen and amen and amen. So let's go into the message today. And we're going to be going back uh, to John, just for a tick, just recapping. And uh, we're doing the food. 
We're doing the food uh, in 2.18, aren't we? Tucker in 2.18. And uh, we're in John 6.47. Most assuredly I say to you, he who believes in me has everlasting life. He who believes in me has everlasting life. I am the bread of life. Your fathers ate the manna in the wilderness and are dead. John 6, <coughs> 50. This is the bread which comes down from heaven that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever and the bread that I shall give is my flesh, which I shall give for the life of the world. The Jews therefore quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is food indeed and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me and I in him. As the living Father sent me and I live because of the Father. So he who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers ate the manna <coughs> and are dead. He who eats this bread will live forever. These things he said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Therefore many of his disciples, when they heard this, said, this is hard saying, who can understand it? And reading on further, they went back. When things get a bit hard, people go back, don't they? When the going gets tough, uh, the religious get going. They move out. They don't want to play uh, the game anymore. They take their ball home and you don't see them anymore because they're religious sinners. They love sin. They don't want to let go of their sin. And they can't sit in a meeting where the Holy Ghost is because they're convicted of their sin. And that's very uncomfortable. Amen? That's very uncomfortable. When people hear the truth and don't want to do the truth, don't worry about putting it back in the bag, brother. Just leave it out and sit it on the floor and we won't have all that. Yeah, that's sweet. I appreciate that. So, we've been looking at food in 218. Are we going to be like the world and we're just going to go out there and think that, oh, I'm going to go to the restaurant, that'll make me happy. Oh, I'm going to go here, that'll make me happy. Oh, if I buy this, that'll make me happy. You're deceiving yourself. You're deceiving yourself. The, the, this will liven me up if I go and do this. I max out my credit card and then uh, it'll, all, it'll be very joyful for about an hour until you get home and check your statements and you realise you're in debt again more than ever. <laughs> it's sort of like the sinking sand, you know. <laughs> It's the heart going into the new Nike sneakers, you know, just sinking. <laughs> but the Lord has a food, a, 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 a wine and an oil and a bread and a milk that will lift us up and uh, will deliver us from any debt we have unto men or woman or family or relatives. There'll be no debts. We won't be indebted to the flesh or them. We'll be indebted to God. We'll be walking in the Spirit and He will be our priority. And everyone said, Amen. 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 Huh? So let's go into the message today. We're going to be reading uh, from the writings of Luke for our message today. We, we've already dealt with uh, um, eating in 2.18. What's on the menu? Truth, of course. Bon Appetit. And we've done Ezekiel there, Ezekiel 3. And then we've done, uh, last week, uh, Restaurante Daniel, you know. And uh, not with the plenty olive oil, but plenty Holy Ghost oil, yeah? Beautiful. 
And so now we're going into Luke, and the chapter is uh, 15 today. Luke 15, glory to the Lamb. Hey? Boy, oh boy, Jesus done it all for me, up there upon the tree, nailed it to the cross, finished it for you and me. Hey? Nothing's been left undone. It's all been done at the tree. We just got to lay hold of it by faith obedience. Right? That's the key. That's the key of, of locking in. That is the key that to, to, to unlock the liberty is the truth and, and obedience to the infallible truth of the Christ. So today in Luke 15, we're going to start reading in verse 11. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of my goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed into a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there rose a severe famine in that land and he began to be in want then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed the swan verse 16 luke 15 and he would have gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate and no one gave him anything but when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am not any longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Oh, repentance really humbles us, doesn't it? Re true repentance, you know, when we truly repent, it's a humbling thing. And we're, we're not uh, desiring to be the high-minded anymore. And I know what I'm doing. Don't tell me what to do. Just give me my share and I'm going to go and do my thing. Hey? Well... The title of our message today in relation to our initial starting point, what are you going to be eating in 2.18? Well, we're seeing what this guy is eating. We're seeing what this young man ended up eating. Right? So the title of our message today is The Prodigal, The Prodigal Pantry. The Prodigal Pantry. Hey, we're going to look at that pantry and what was in there, and we can even compare that with the Paraclete pantry. Hey, and see what we got there. Praise, <laughs> Praise the Lord that the Lord, His pantry is always full. It's overflowing. My cup is full. My cup is full and overflowing. He always provides. The Lord is my shepherd. I have no want. He layeth me down in green pastures. Forget about people. They can try and do what they like, think what they like. They can come against you. They, they can work against you secretly. It will not work. When the Lord is your shepherd... And they will be in amazement. And then you just turn around and say, It is a miracle that I know my God. Given where I come from, when I look back, when I look back, to what I was, I was born of Adam, and I was born of Eve, 
I was conceived in sin. I was God's enemy. <laughs> it is a miracle that I know my God. It's a miracle. Hallelujah. So, the prodigal pantry versus the paraclete, the plentiful paraclete pantry. Eh? Hallelujah. So, or would it be more appropriate to say the prodigal son? <laughs> oh, I think there's some, some got it there. The prodigal son. As in pig pod. Maybe we could call the message the pig pod prodigal. Or the prodigal pig. No. A lot of people say he was the uh, the lost son. Now he was the willfully lost son. We know that one, don't we? The willfully lost son. Now, I have to start. Um, I tell you what, it, it does matter. It, it matters to me where I dine. I have to be dining at the master's table, I tell you. I'm very fussy. I, I, I mean, earthly food has its place, very limited, and has its time, and blah, blah, but hey, when it comes to the real dining, I have to dine at the master's table. I, I have to recommend the master's table to everyone because it will satisfy. And all I can say is I am satisfied. I am satisfied, satisfied with Jesus. I am satisfied, satisfied with him. Can we go to the Psalms, please? I am satisfied, satisfied with Jesus. Oh, I am satisfied, satisfied with him. It is a miracle. Psalm 16, please. Hey? Psalm 16. The willfully lost. I exchanged the plentiful paraclete pantry for the prodigal pantry or the prodigal pantry. <laughs> Psalm 16 verse 5, O Lord, you are the portion of my inheritance and my cup, you maintain my lot. The lions have fallen to me in pleasant places, yes, I have a good inheritance. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel. My heart also instructs me in the night seasons. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Oh, the earth may tremble and the heavens fall. Hey? I'm not reading the script there. But my heart is glad. I, my tongue is like the pen of a ready writer. So, let me emphasize on verse 5. You are the portion of my inheritance and my cup you maintain, my love. My master is my maintenance man, the son of man, the man from Galilee. It's a miracle, isn't it? That the Lord satisfies... Uh, Wayward people. It, it's a miracle. It's nearly an impossibility that a, a wicked person can be transformed and then satisfied. Because we know Adam and Eve weren't satisfied. Well, we know Eve wasn't. She wasn't satisfied with Jesus. She wasn't in the garden singing, I am satisfied, satisfied with Jesus. She wasn't singing that because she wasn't. She wasn't satisfied. But we know that if the prodigal son had been satisfied, if the prodigal son 
would have had God as the portion of his cup and, and his inheritance, or in other words, meaning if Jesus was above, if God was above what was in his cup, whatever he had there, we know that it was plentiful in the house. There was no want. Even the servants ate better than what he was getting when he left home. But if he would have put God as the portion, in other words, he'd have a great time, he'd have a great car, he'd have a great house, and so-called great friends, and great everything, Jesus would still be above that. But that wasn't the case. Jesus was not number one. And when Jesus is not number one, all you end up with is a prodigal pantry. It's never changed from Genesis to Revelation. God makes sure you end up with a prodigal pantry. God makes sure that you get the message. Because God's ultimate aim is to bring us to godly repentance. Hey? Godly sorrow that leadeth to repentance. Hey? Not to be regretted. That's God's aim. To bring everyone. Paul said, listen, I'm not, uh, I'm not set back, you know. Uh, that you are all sorrowful, I rejoice that you are sorrowful. Hey? I rejoice that you are because it's going to lead somewhere. Hey? It's going to lead. It's going to lead you on to ultimately and hopefully glory. I love to make people sorrowful or with bring them to a place of godly sorrow because I want them to repent and I want them to be saved but yet we have teachings around the place that say oh no you don't have to repent but we have scripture after scripture and parable after parable 2 Corinthians chapter 7. And the verse is 2 Corinthians 7, verse 9. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance, for you were made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance unto salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. And the prodigal son, I tell you what, he would have died eventually of starvation. Eventually. But we see that he came. Hey? Eh? We see that he came to his senses. Glory to the Lamb. And he got on the telephone to glory. Hey? He decided to humble himself. See, this is what I like about repentance. True repentance. Godly sorrow leading to true repentance. Leading to salvation. We don't just see salvation. We see godly sorrow leading to true repentance. Leading to salvation. It's not just I, I believe. I believe the burgers are better at Hungry Jack's and they're sitting in McDonald's. You know, how many people just say things off the top of their head? How many people just say things because they're in an emotional mood? How many people just say things, you know? Oh, I love you. Hogwash, you don't love me. You don't love me at all. Oh, I love you. 
And then, nilly willy, you know, she thinks that the man loves her because he said, I love you. Really? Howdy, partner! Yeehaw! Well, howdy! <laughs> howdy, partner! <laughs> we got a joint bank account. Yeehaw! Howdy! Do you drive an Audi? Why, howdy! <laughs> That's the God that says he loves you. Have you noticed Mary Lou every time that you mention marriage, he cringes and looks the other way? That's because he's just using you. He thinks you come from the meat market. He doesn't love you. Get it now. Process it now. Process it in your head now. If he loves me, he will marry me. If he loves me, he will marry me. If she loves him, she will marry him and do what he says. And be led by him. Hello. How? Oh. Howdy. Howdy, partner. Where was I? We got a telephone to glory. Let's go to Matthew, please. Telephone to glory. Oh, what joy divine. I can hear the Holy Ghost moving along the line. We're doing Matthew 10. And the verse is... Twenty-nine. Are not two sparrows sold for a copper coin, and not one of them falls to the ground apart from your Father's will? But the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Do not fear, therefore you are more value than many sparrows. Can you say amen? amen? Hi? Can you say amen to that? <coughs> How wonderful is that? The Lord Jesus. That's how much he cares for you and that's how much he cares for me. How much do you care for Jesus? That he would know every hair in your head. Hi? That he would know when the sparrow falls to the ground, that he knows your heart. And then we got Matthew 11, verse 28. Telephone to glory. We always put these together. Always put Matthew 10, 29 to 30 together with Matthew 11, 28. Come to me. All ye who labour and are heavily laden, and I'll give you rest. Hey? Come to me. Don't go anywhere else. Come to me. This is what the prodigal, or the prodigal, finally decided to do in the end. There is no rest. There is no peace. And there is no rest. Until the Lord has his way. Hey? Come to me. It is a miracle that I would know my God. As I look back over the years, thinking about what I was. I was born of Adam. And I was born of Eve. I was conceived in sin. I was God's enemy. Come unto me. Telephone to glory. Hey. This is what we have in the perpetually plentiful paraclete pantry. Hey. We're doing the peas today, aren't we? Like three peas in the pod. We're doing the peas. 
the miracle of the perpetual, plentiful paraclete pantry as compared to the prodigal or the prodigal pantry. Hey? So we can just call. We can just call the, to the Lord. Whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord. It's like we're starving when we have all these problems and all this loneliness and, and, and it's all ultimately about self. You know, it's sort of like all within, isn't it? That everything inside is so complex and all tied up and knotted. And, but it's when we call upon the name of the Lord that he saves us. Psalm 34, isn't it? This poor man cried out and the Lord heard him on the telephone to glory. Hello. Yes, this is Jesus. <laughs> and he saved me out of all my troubles. I had many, many troubles. I was a very troubled man. And although I never did consider myself a wise man, uh, I knew enough to know that no human could help me. I wouldn't go to my mother, I wouldn't go to my dad, I wouldn't go to my brother or my sister. i just keep it within. And it just built up and built up and built up until I was just a raving alcoholic. Chain smoking. <laughs> At the age of 27. <laughs> but then I called on the Lord. Whosoever calls. Eh? It is a miracle. That I know, my God, when I look back to what I was, I just can't believe it. I was born of Adam, and I was born of Eve, conceived in sin, an enemy of God. We're all enemies of God, isolated and and uh, by no means part of the Israel of God till we're born again. Okay? Enemies of the truth, as Romans, uh, unable to please God. Do you know if we don't please God, we can't be pleased? You'll never be pleased. You'll never be satisfied until you please God. Did you know that? That's why the world, no matter what they got, they can be the most famous, they, they, they can have all the money in the world, they can have all the praises of people, and then they go and hang themselves. Or suicide. Or, or drown themselves. Or overdose of drugs. The best dancer in the world, next to Fred Astaire probably, and Ginger Rogers and Michael Jackson, just overdose. Accidental overdose? You know, was it? It's so sad that we're, we're not eating the food that leads to eternal life, that we're not going to the master's table. That we're not dining at the master's table. So let's have a look at this pantry, this this prodigal or prodigal pantry. Uh, and as we open the door on this pantry, we can go to uh, Luke 15, if you will. We we'll go to Luke 15 
and we'll have a look at um, what's in the storeroom. Luke 15 in the verses 16. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. You, you see what's in there? In the in the prodigal pantry, it's only pig food. That, that's all you can expect. When you depart from God, expect it. Expect to open your pantry in the spiritual realm and only find ponds, pig ponds, pig food. You know, the world, the world it typifies the knowledge and the care of the world uh, and the, the help of the world uh, is symbolic of pods. <laughs> it's symbolic of pig food. It, it is not going to save you what's in the prodigal pantry or the lost. You know, the world is lost. We know that. And it has the world has a pantry. It's called... A particle pantry. <laughs> and there's nothing there but pods. Eh? That's why they have chocolate pods. You know, have you seen those little lollies? They have like a chocolate... They call them something pods. There it is there, isn't it? That's all the world will offer you. I'm really endeavouring here to kill your taste for the world. That's a, a true minister's aim, isn't it? to totally destroy your taste buds for the world and, and the, the lust of the eyes, the lust of the flesh and the pride of life before it's too late. Before it's too late. <laughs> it is a miracle that I know my God. That's a little song the Lord gave me this morning as I'm just sitting here waiting for the sheep to come down the road into the paddock, it just rose up in me, you know? Just rose up and I started singing, It is a miracle that I know my God. When I look back on what I want, oh my God. I was born of Adam and I was born of Eve. I was conceived in sin. I was God's enemy. Just that that paragraph alone just says, wow. Particle pantry, doesn't it? It's just a total mess. It is a miracle that he called my name. Come unto me, child. I heard him say, I'll be your father, you'll be with me, it is a miracle that he anointed me to teach and to preach and to sing unto him sweet songs. It's a miracle all the way through. I just see my life that God done a miracle for me. Not something that you can just brush over. Oh yeah, you know, he was healed of cancer or he God healed me of everything. God healed me of everything, delivered me from everything, gave me everything, is my everything. <laughs> it's a miracle. And the same with the prodigal or the prodigal son. So the P is for pig pods in that word pantry, in the podical, podical pantry. And the A, let's go to verse 19. Luke 15, 19. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. You see, the anguish 
You see that anguish there? Make me like one of your hired servants. When you open the prodigal pen tree, you just feel so full of anguish. Just make me a servant, you know, just how terrible that loss. I had it right there. Hey? The prodigal was feeling this loss. And we open up in the spiritual that that pig pantry, that pod, prodigal pod pantry. And that's just all that there that's there is loss. Or we can we're consumed with the loss. <laughs> You know, people are going to be in hell forever with that. They just be consumed with the loss. To think, I, I had it all there with with my my dad and my brother. We we had it all. I, I was eating the best. I was doing the ah oh, ah. Oh, I'll be just I'll be just howling. The Bible says. The cries will come out of the abyss. They'll be just seething with, with regret and anger and anguish. And oh, forever and forever. Right? I think it's much wiser to eat of the bread of life. And live and live eternally. And live unto God. Right? That the better in your house will be... Uh, Holiness unto the Lord. The truth all the way. P-A-N-T-R-Y. The N is going to be found in Deuteronomy 28. Okay. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Oh, hallelujah. It is a miracle. It's a miracle, I tell you. It's a miracle. Ongoing. Not just a miracle, but an ongoing, never-ending miracle for me, brethren. Hey? Ongoing. Ne We're going to Deuteronomy uh, 28. Deuteronomy 28. And we're going to start reading. In verse 15. It shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commands and his statutes which I command you today that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. And there was the prodigal son. He was in the blessing of Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. But then as you start verse 15... You see the cursing of God. But Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14 is the blessing. That's what the prodigal son had at home. In Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14, the Lord commanded his blessings all over that obedient one. He never had no... Uh, prodigal pantry in Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 14. The prodigal pantry was in Deuteronomy 28, 14 on. All the way. To the end. Locust and famine and drama after drama after drama. Hey? Which one do we want? Do we want the <laughs> do we want the uh, the perpetual plentiful paraclete pantry, or do we want the prodigal pantry? You know, the dull prodigal. All that's there is pig pods. Look, even in the in the natural, I, I can go to our pantry and and the, the most Simple and smallest of foods, it, it is so plentiful and perpetual. You know, it's just so, so pleasurable. It's so great.
Because the Lord has delivered me from the dainties of the world. He has delivered me from the delicacies of the world. And it's veg and water. Sweet, sweet. It's good for my complexion. Makes me look younger by the day. I recommend Vegemite on toast. <laughs> but I feel a bit greedy having that, you know. Maybe I need to humble myself and just have bread. You know, not fresh bread, of course. <laughs> Maybe some stale bread from the bakery that they're giving away. And I could use that money for the ministry, couldn't I? <laughs> Do we think like that? Are we still prodigal? All right. Oh, P A N. P was for pig pods, and A was for anguish, or that feeling, that loss. Oh, I'm just ready to be a servant. I had all that. The N is for nothing. Luke 15. Let's go there. Let's go there. Luke 15. And the verse is 16. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. You going to give you anything in the world? They've already told you they're not going to give you anything. They already make it clear to everyone. No such thing as a free meal, you know. No such thing as a free meal. That's, that's the way they think. You see their mindset? Deceitful. Stingy. No such thing as a free meal. Oh, they're going to get you somewhere. They're waiting for you. They didn't give you that free meal for nothing at that church. You know. Because that's the way they think. That's the born of the Adam and born of the Eve. Conceived in sin. God's enemy. <laughs> it is. Oh, I'm sure. I'm positive. It is a me miracle. That I know, my God. It's a miracle. As I look back to what I was, it's a miracle that I am here today rejoicing. The prodigal pantry, or the podical, that would be even better, wouldn't it? P A N T, let's go to verse 14 for the, the T. So the P was for pig pods, the A was for anguish, and the N is for nothing, nothing. Why do you think all these people in the streets and everyone, they go down to the soup bowl? They go down to the religious soup bowls. <laughs> Get something to eat. Hey? They give you nothing. Oh, we're going to give you a, a, a $100 gift card. If you spend $10,000, you get a $100 gift card. They're not even giving you that gift card. It's added on. They've stitched it on on the interest. <laughs> With real, real insurance. You know what real insurance is? Holy Ghost assurance. That's real insurance. Holy Ghost assurance. With real insurance. Are you with real insurance? Oh, you better. Here, let me dump a fear tactics on you just for one minute. You imagine. Oh, if you die today, what are you going to do? Rejoice. <laughs> I'm going to rejoice. Woo! Ah! Ah! I'm going to rejoice if I die today. I ain't going to die. Because <laughs> I ate the bread and the food from the 
restaurant called Daniel, the God of uh, Restaurant Daniel, you know, with that Holy Ghost oil, because oils ain't oils, are they? No. It is definitely a miracle. We're on to the T. T. Verse 14, Luke 15. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. So when you open up the door of that pantry, all you do is you see the pods there, the pig food. You're feeling all the loss. Nothing. Nothing there. And then you just trouble. Tears for troubled. Tears for trouble. But what does it say in John 16? Let's have a look at our Bibles. John 16. What does it say? What does it say in John 16? Hey? What does it say in John 16? Verse 33. John 16, 33, please. Table 4. Uh, in me you will have peace. In the world you will have trouble. <coughs> Be of good cheer. Ah, I have overcome the world. John 16, 33. Someone say amen. amen. In me you will have peace. You listening? In the perpetual, plentiful, paraclete pantry, you will have peace when you open that door. Woo-wee! Glory! And then you open up the pantry at home, and it says, oh, what are we going to eat tonight? Oh, doesn't look like there's much there. You hear a voice behind you saying, <laughs> it's time to order pizza. <laughs> Who was that? That was my wife there. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, it's time to go into the lounge, I think. <laughs> Just kick back. <laughs> See what's on this order list. Yeah, right. It is a miracle. So the the tears for trouble in the world. That's where the prodigal headed. The prodigal son headed to the world. And when he opened it up, the pantry, just the pods, the anguish, there's nothing. So troubled. Oh dear. Please don't eat. From the world's tables. Please come to the master's table. Come and dine. P-A-N-T-R-Y. So we go to the R in verse 17. Luke 15, 17. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough? And to spare the servants have spare food. And I perish. With hunger. So what's kicking in here is regret. Regret. Hey? Regret. In verse 17, he came to himself. Oh, hallelujah. Hey? He came to himself and said, How many of my father's hearts? The penny dropped. Hey? The penny drop. And we don't read about the, the prodigal son ever, ever going back again. Same old, same old. Now, he learned his lesson. He learned his lesson. Life is about learning and, and lessons, isn't it? And very few learn their lesson. Very few learn their lesson. Most are unteachable. There's a remnant that do learn their lesson. The fool repeats their folly. They keep going over the same ground and then they know it's painful. They know it's not going to bear any fruit, any godly fruit. They just keep going over and over and over. Same old, same old. Piercing themselves through with 
all the sorrows and heartache you can think. Because it's something that they want that God does not want for them. So they play the prodigal. And all they're left with is the prodigal pantry. Very painful, isn't it? The prodigal pantry is very painful. By no means perpetually plentiful. Paraclete pantry. P A N T R Y, the R is for regret. The Y. Why, 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 Delilah? Luke 15 in the verses. Hang on, before we go there, I think I might just go back to the letter R because it was regret. And let's just do Matthew um, Matthew 7 there. Matthew 7, um, 21. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. You like that? But you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything to get to heaven. You're working your way to heaven. What? You've got to do Father's will. I didn't think you had to do anything. You just sort of believe, don't you, in your head space, you know? And just sort of, yeah, the burgers are better at Hungry Jack's, but I do eat at McDonald's. It's sort of like, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. You know, the language of the generation today. When you ask the question, they say, yeah, no, yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> ah, you try to trick me, aren't you? Yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. Mm, I don't know. Even politicians do it. Intellectuals, so called. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm confused, you know what I mean? Don't know where I am, I don't. Not everyone who says Lord, Lord. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord, Jesus is Lord. Probably want a cracker. Jesus is Lord. Not everyone that says that Jesus is Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of Father. Love it. Prodigal wasn't doing that will, wasn't he? He wasn't getting no foretaste of glory divine there in the prod, uh, prodigal pantry. Now, we can go to verse 15, which says, Luke 15, 15, then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. Well, the prodigal pantry, you see that? The last letter Y in pantry means yoked. Yoked. Y-O-K-E-D. Yoked. You know what happens when you leave the Lord and you leave your local church and you leave the ministry and you leave your brothers and sisters and you go into the world they ain't going to give you nothing but heartache and pain and trouble because Jesus said so not me in the world you will have trouble in me you will have peace right? not anguish and loss and oh me oh my oh me oh my I'm a fool to leave you oh me oh my Oh, I'm going crazy, just crazy. Oh, me, oh, my. You know? No, 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 no. There won't be none of that. Because you ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I said to Jesus, I ain't going nowhere, Jesus. You ain't getting rid of me. <laughs> I'm here to the end. <laughs> no matter what, unto death. Destruction. Whoo. So the why is yoked. When you leave the Lord, you yoke yourself and join with them. And join with those sinful, ungodly friends. And you're joining with them. Eh? Then he went and joined, yoked himself to a citizen. Eh? To a citizen of that country 
and he sent him into his fields. He said, well, you know what you can do? Ah, yeah. You go and feed my pigs. You go on. You go and feed my pigs. That's what I'm going to do for you. That's the job I have for you. This young man came out of a, a well-to-do family. He's there just feeding pigs. <laughs> That's what the world, people of the world are going to do for you. They ain't going to do nothing for you. Oh, I have a lot of good friends in the world. You sure? You'll find out. You're going to find out. Good friend. What do you call good? Do you call good what Jesus calls good? Jesus calls the good news of glad. Tidings of goodly things. Good. That's the word of God. The message of Jesus. It's the only good thing. Huh? Come and see the good thing, come and see the good thing, come and see. Come and hear the good thing, come and hear the good news, the glad tidings. It's waiting here, it's waiting here, it's waiting here for you. Come and hear the good thing, come and hear the good thing, come and hear. Okay. The gospel is the good thing. No, 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 no. Pods actually come from a Mediterranean tree, apparently. It was like a sort of a pulp or a legume. Edible pulp of the legume family. So, there it is, hey? Eh? The prodigal pantry or the podical. More suitable, isn't it? Uh, yeah. So I'll just give all the glory to Jesus today. Everybody said... And no man and no man. Thank you, Jesus.